Okay, this is a experiment. I'm gonna. This is. I'm on the Canopy app. I'm up right up here in the right hand corner, and this app is a streaming service. A lot of people probably know in the United States that connects to libraries. So if you have a, a library card for a city, county library, or a university. Um, it's an app you can use to stream a few movies per month. Usually it takes, you get a certain number of credits up here. And uh, usually you need at least two to watch any single movie. I don't know why they do it that way now. Anyway, what I thought it would be fun for me to do, and if it turns out to be anything at all, I'll post it. If not, I'll just junk it. Is kind of scroll through here and notice a lot of them. I've seen the movies and I haven't seen the book, or I've seen the book and I haven't seen the movies. I'm going to scroll th through and just look what they got here and maybe talk about a couple of them. First, I see here Much Ado About Nothing. I think that's the, yeah, it's the Kenneth Branagh version. Um, I think it's the first version of that uh, that play that was ever filmed, the first major one anyway, which is kind of neat because, you know, traditionally, at that point anyway, uh, since about the 40s, I guess, between... The 40s and the early 90s, the they would uh, occasionally shoot the tragedies or the histories, but not really the comedies. And Much Ado About Nothing is the first Shakespeare play I ever read, and one of my favorites. I think it's really good. I like to contrast it to uh, Romeo and Juliet, which is about teenagers in love. This is about adults in love. Uh, the uh, great. Um, Benedict and um, this great speech about not wanting to be a, a, be involved in family and stuff and of course he reverses himself entirely uh, nothing here nothing here that is interested in me that is interesting to me that's a great movie but it's not you can talk about oh, the saint uh, that's the Roger Moore series I suppose uh, Oops. Which which I like, and I've read some of the the stories. This is going way back to the I don't know when the Saint story started in the twenties, maybe. But what was kind of cool about that series was kind of a man about town slash spy guy like Bulldog, Bulldog Drummond or something. And but a lot of the books were published; they were novellas, which is one of my favorite forms to to read. Is uh, you know a little shorter than novel novella length stories. I wish there were more printed today. And I wonder if those are in print anywhere on ebooks or not. Oh, whatever, who knows. Oh, Luther. I think I think I've seen season five already. Perfume, that novel, which was a which was a a, a big kind of bestseller, a rare thing in the United States for a bestseller, best-selling book to be translated from another language, from the German novel. But uh, I enjoyed it when I read it. Uh, it's kind of got some kind of weird coincidences and stuff in it, but it's. I liked it enough that I never really felt the urge to watch the movie. Uh, a lot of time I feel that way about movies. If I like the book, like unless it's a really big talked-about movie, why do I want to? mess with it but it's got Alan Rickman in it he's always good so these I don't know my Salinger year I read that memoir uh, I had it sometimes it's confused with another memoir about a person a young woman who had a um, an abusive relationship with JD Salinger but that's not this book this book is about a young woman her I guess who works for a, a powerful agent literary agent Played by Sigourney Weaver, it looks like. I haven't seen this movie either, but I really enjoyed the book because it it's, uh, it gives a background about what it's like to be a young person getting started in publishing, and she talks about a little of the inside dope on on the uh, the agency and what it was like to work there and dealing with people who write Salinger letters and also her financial problems with you know, student loans and stuff. She's kind of of the generation, I guess she's probably late Gen X, where they really People really had to start dealing with that um, those loan nonsense and stuff, you know. So, 
hope your life turned out uh, okay after this. It was a really worthwhile reading, mem worth reading memoir if you're interested in New York publishing. And I can't remember when it was said. I guess probably the 90s or something. I think most people who like books would just like to read it and see what she goes through and everything. Uh, you know, it's not all negative, not bad. Okay, the Foresight sa Saga. I have to read these books because I have a lot of questions about this series, which I'm going to have to make a video about because I don't want to discuss it before I read the books. I have to read, I think it's a trilogy, I've downloaded it, i got to read those. Because I have, I have questions about this Foresight family and the people around them. And I have theories, but I don't know if they hold up because I don't know what I'm just basing on uh, how the, how the ad adaptation was done. And I, I know this isn't even the, the adaptation that people like. This is, a, this is the more recent one, but there's one in the, I don't know, the 60s or 70s that is supposed to be a British classic. Maybe somebody knows. Oh, We've Always Lived in the Castle. I, you know, I love that novel so much. It's a great uh, gothic novel by Shirley Jackson. Uh, wonderful. Um, who's in this? Here is another one where I just, like, why would I want to see that movie? Because the book is so good, it can only be a disappointment. Whereas if I'd seen the movie first, I'm sure it would have been fine. But Name of the Rose, I'm going to confess that I couldn't finish the book. I'll try it again someday, though. Wait, what is this? I wonder if this is, like, a different... No, no, this is the Sean Connery version. For some reason, they have... A, the German uh, title on here too, but oh man, I hope I can get back to that page. A hey, Karumba, the conversation, great film. Wander, well, I I did watch this one. The, of course, the Swedish one is better, but Wander's well, uh, another character I haven't uh, I haven't read the books. I should. I don't know what I was waiting for. For a while I was waiting for, I just wanted to forget all the stories because I know that each of the series was adapted literally from the books. I kind of wanted to forget the mysteries before I dived into the books. But then even more time went by. You know how that goes. But my, but I'll try. This is based on a F. Scott Fitzgerald story, I've been told. Um, didn't see the movie. No point bringing it up, even though I just did. Famous screenwriter. This is a good movie about a screenwriter who was blacklisted. Howard's in. Uh, my favorite, uh, Ian Foster's probably Passage to India. I think Howard's in was the first one I, I read. I read it right after seeing this movie when it came out. And it's very well written, of course. But Passage to India, I think, is really, even though it's his... his an earlier novel. I think it's his first novel. I think it's just so beautifully written. I would just read that opening chapter again and again just for the descriptions. I loved it, and it's you know it's got those. He's so he's got those great uh, sexual rom and romantic undertones under everything. People, stuff people can't talk about. Um, keep scrolling here. I don't have a timer on this thing. I should have set a timer. The Queen. Secrets of the Elk and I get into it, like the crappy. Oh no, I shouldn't say this is crappy. These are courses you could take online. All the great courses are on here. Strumble again. Sure. Oh, speaking of Shirley Jackson, here's this movie that came out a few years ago uh, about Shirley Jackson. I think it's kind of a fictionalized version of her life. Uh, haven't seen it. This is great, huh? I'm just going through here, just telling you all the stuff I know nothing about. Brighton Rock. Uh, Graham Greene, another great writer. This is one of his earlier, earliest entertainments, quote-unquote entertainments. This is not the good version, of course. I, there's one from the 50s or whatever. It's, it's a good gangster story. It's about Emily Dickinson, but I haven't seen it. This is really making me look bad about all the stuff I haven't seen. Mosquito Coast liked the movie. Here's an example of one where I liked the movie, so I didn't really feel the need to read the book by Paul 
But I'm just going to move on. If I stop every time I can't remember somebody's name, it's going to be forever. And then I'll have to edit, which I don't want to do. Father Brown. I heard this series is not faithful, that it's like tw it's more twee, and, and the Father Brown stories are kind of uh, fairly dark. Chesterson's one of my favorite Stylus. I love reading the Father Brown stories for their setting, mostly. Um, the puzzles are, are interesting. I don't really share Chesterton's, Chesterton's uh, worldview at all, which is, but that never stopped me from enjoying a good writer. Uncut Gems, love that movie. No book. The Green Knight, I did read... Uh, I think I read the Tolkien translation. Is there a Tolkien translation? But before that, I read a really good translation that came out a long time ago now. I should probably look it up. Oh, man, The Green Knight. Um, excellent translation. Very strange book to me. I don't, I don't have the background to really understand this, this era of early, early early English fiction. I mean, uh, sagas or whatever you call them, epic poetry. But it's so great because some, so many things in it are, are so relatable with other things. It's just such a strange worldview. When you read something like that, or you read that, or when I read that, or the ep epic of Gilgamesh, or something really, really ancient, you really get a feeling of how different the human race is. That makes sense. Gonna have to find that and clip it out. You really get this the you really get a feeling of how different cultures change over time and how broad the human experience is, I guess. That makes it sound a little bit okay. This is kind of a fun movie. It's 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 this is he's playing uh, Andrew Stevens playing Dickens here, and it's uh, it's a biopic kind of. Uh, where he's trying to he's in a slope in his career, a slump in his career. Let's say after having early success and his tour of America, he comes back and things have tapered off a bit. He's trying to get inspired. So uh, characters come in from uh, from uh, that would later become part of the story, uh, A Christmas Carol, and his parents are in it. So you see a lot about his relationship with his parents and how they inspired different characters. I'd recommend that movie if you haven't seen it. If you're a fan of Dickens, and why wouldn't you be? What's wrong with you? Uh, Little Women never read it. I have to read it. The Bostonians. I do like Henry James. I'm not sure I read the Bostonians. More Father Brown. Series 9. Boy, they made a lot of those. War and Peace. This is the early one, I think, from the 50s. Yeah, with Henry Fonda. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to watch that. I mean, after you've read War and Peace, what do I want to watch that, that for? I love War and Peace. Great novel. Read it early on. It was one of the first classics I read, like really big, full-on classics. And I'm glad I read it when it did because it gave me the confidence to tack, tackle other things. You know, people get intimidated by it, but... And the names are kind of tough, frankly. The names are tough, I, but it's it's not... I mean, it's not Finnegan's Wake. The, the style isn't tough, uh, nothing like that. It's just a, a story, a very big story, and people, you know, it's... People read Harry Potter and there's strange names in that. So it's just a little getting uh, used to the names. Scarlet Pimpernel. I think I'll be reading this this year because I think Michael K. Vaughn has this on his uh, free download book club. That's not the name of it, but I'll link to it if I remember. Papillon. That's a memoir. Uh, that was from a memoir by a a uh, French memoir by uh, a man who escaped Devil's Island, which my dad really loved. He loved that book. And, of course, the Clint Eastwood, I mean, the uh, Stephen, uh, 
Steve McQueen novel. Name of the Road has shown up a lot on here. Uh, I, I like the movie, and I really feel like I should read the book. I like a lot of um, essays written by this, this author. Good movie. Haven't read the book. Seen the memes. Great movie, though. Galaxy Quest. Every Star Trek fan loves Galaxy, Galaxy Quest, and I'm a Star Trek fan, so... Oh, uh, it's probably family drama, Killing of a Sacred Deer. Yes, sit down with the whole family and watch Killing of a Sacred Deer. Good movie. Uh, um, flick. That's a, this is a good. This is a good category for me. Oh, The Adventures of Arsène Lupin. Um, also on my list. These Agatha Christie, these French Agatha Christie episodes are they take. They took original characters, I mean, they created original characters set in the 60s and adapted the plots of various uh, Christie novels into them. So, uh, like, uh, different Poirot novels and whatever. It's an interesting take on it. I, I don't know. I watched a few of them. They were okay. I wanted to like them more than I did. Asian cinema, those don't look like adaptations. Italian cinema. Cult favorites, gotta love those. Okay, Battle Royale. This is a book, I hurt my back reading this book because it's about, I don't know, 600 pages, I think. I sat down. Once, when I was unemployed, I sat down in a big lounge chair in a bookstore, I mean not a bookstore, a coffee shop in Seattle when I was still there, and read about 450 pages of this book and sitting there, slumped in a bad position, and because I just could not put it down. It's a fantastic book. I know people love the movie, but again, it's a case of just that book was so good. Why do I want to ruin it with the movie? So maybe I will. Someday. Okay, I'm about to wrap it up here. This has really gone on long enough. I don't even know if it's recording. Okay, and the Little Murders of Agatha Christie, that French series. The first couple of seasons, they're set in the 50s with these two cops. Then it was that other group set in the 60s with those two cops. Blowing the bloody doors off. I'm. I don't know if this is a different alternate universe, Nazis win World War II, or the one I'm thinking of that I didn't like, so I'll keep my mouth shut on that one. Tarzan, a documentary about Tarzan, I don't watch on this, but uh, I think it's just about the character. We're all big Tarzan fans, aren't we, folks? Oh, Purple Noon. Okay, this is a, it's a good movie. It's based on the talented Mr. Ripley, Patricia Highsmith, probably one of my top five all-time favorite writers. Saddest day of my life when I ran out of her books. I haven't reread them. I don't do that much rereading, but um, just a fantastic writer. Ripley series, all her books I like. So I'll probably do a video on them someday. Looks like the rest is kid stuff. Okay, that's it. I'm going to turn this off. If you watch this long, I really appreciate it. I'm just trying to figure stuff out still, and hopefully I'm not wasting everybody's time too much. And so if you like this, please hit the subscribe button or leave a comment or anything like that, and I will see you next time.